I'm Bishop David Moy of Rockford. Welcome to this, our meditation for Wednesday of the 20th week in Ordinary Time. Soy el Obispo David Moloy, gracias otra vez por unirse con nosotros para esta meditación para la vigésima semana del tiempo ordinario. As always, let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who have taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that in the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading today is from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you're guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Immorality, impurity, lust, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, Rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, we've just been given rather famously, a pair of lists from St. Paul. They're what he calls the works of the flesh, and the other list is the fruit of the Spirit, that being, of course, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Those lists are instructive because they offer us a diagnosis and an antidote for the human condition for all time, but in a particular way for our current social illness that's been building in our society, not just for decades, but really over recent centuries. In fact, beginning in the 1600s in Europe, a movement started to analyze the world and ourselves as human beings in what was considered an enlightened way, the so-called enlightenment. And that's to say that it was based in what we as human beings could verify as the true knowledge that's rooted in our own perceptions and especially in science. In so doing, of course, the role of God in the world was not only called into question, allegedly as a new way of looking at things, but even more the very idea of God and of faith having any reality or any place in the world or human existence was excluded, and it was even fought against by this mindset. What was first justified as a way of understanding the world in a pure way, not reliant on myths or stories of God, perhaps as fanciful as the Greek mythology, it became a centuries-long struggle between faith and acceptance that this world didn't come from nowhere, that man is not simply an accident floating in space, or on the other hand, the argument that man is the highest power and the measure of all things, that man is the one who decides what is good and what is evil. The loss of belief in God has been spreading for some time. And the result has been an impoverishment of the human person. This idea has resulted time and again in education, in governments, in societies that see the human person as only a bodily and earthly reality. No spiritual reality is acknowledged. And we're now told that faith in religion is not only not needed or based in truth, but it's in fact a source of evil, a source of bigotry, a source of division among us. St. Paul's letter to the Galatians shows us that 
This idea of the Enlightenment in some ways really isn't new at all. It goes back to his time as well, and in fact, the idea even goes back further to Adam and Eve and original sin, where that grasping at that fruit of the tree, of the knowledge of good and evil, was an effort, a human effort, to take control from God himself. St. Paul says in his letter to the Galatians that we just heard that the works of the flesh, that is life without God, results in the following. Immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, idolatry sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. That's a comprehensive list. But doesn't it in some way feel like it captures the sense of modern society? Our society, so full of emptiness, so full of anger, so full of grudges, and a general sense of being confused about what's really right and wrong and that we can build our lives around. These are the consequences of being and living without God. But St. Paul doesn't leave it there. He gives hope and reassurance. Look what he describes as that list of the fruit of the Spirit, of life with God. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Sure, we understand that our weakness and our sinfulness can intrude even on that list of the works of the Spirit. But don't we more deeply recognize that that list is a description of the life we were made for, of the life that deep down we all desire? There is so much division. There is so much anger these days. But why is not a mystery. It's because so many have been trying to live without God. And the reality is we need God. We need the Spirit of God in our souls. We are empty without him. But with God, we are happier in this life, and we're happier getting ready for the world to come. Let's again conclude our reflection with a prayer. Let us pray. May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, O Lord, and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of his dew. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.